Hello everyone, this is Dom, and this is going to be a short episode about useful redstone inventions. I don't take any credit for inventing any of them, I just use them in most of uh, my inventions that have to do anything with redstone. Um, then we're going to go over very basic concepts, um, for example, how to turn a uh, button into a switch. Um, so, you know, that acts like a switch, you know, uh, alarm systems, um, very, you know, more of a useful look at redstone other than just straight on and off, open this door with it, close this door with it, um, or activate this piston or deactivate this piston. Now, what we're going to do is start our, our episode off with a simple memory cell, and what'll, what that means is that um, it stores the, the state of its input. So, for example, uh, this is an RS NOR latch. Um, what it does is it, it's really hard to um, explain the, the letters behind it, but uh, what it pretty much does is it stores the input um, in the system. So, as you can tell, I hit this button. Even though the button comes back out and it shouldn't be powering this redstone, it's still on. Um, as you can tell, though, it doesn't do anything when I keep on hitting it. Um, that's the good part about the RS NOR latch. It has a reset, almost like button. There we go. Um, it happens on the same, same thing happens on this side too. Me hitting this button activates this redstone. It doesn't need these. Um, this is the smallest um, for this specific design. Okay. Also, these don't need to be buttons. They could be um, even, you know, they could, it could be activated with redstone, for example, even with a switch. So, switch is on, it changes the state of the circuit. Even if you um, shut the switch on or off, the circuit's going to stay in the same state unless you reset it with the other side. Um, and I would take the outputs, actually not to be for these, um, but I would take an output wire off the torch itself, just so it doesn't mess with, um, just doesn't me so it doesn't mess with the circuitry. For example, if you get some sort of feedback into the circuit. Um, it'll stop right here at the torch, of course. Okay, um, so that's that. That's um, the basis for a lot of inventions in RS NOR Latch. Uh, you can minimize them uh, to your use. There's a lot of different designs. Check the wiki out. Uh, it's great for <laughs> circuitry, really, really great for circuitry. Um, this is a vertical design right here. Uh, so uh, it works the same way. It could be powered by redstone or with buttons or switches. Um, you you deactivate, the, this is an input here and this is an input here, um, or I think you can also use this one as well. Let's try it. Yep, you can use this one as well, this block. Also, um, this is advantageous because you can power both sides of the block. Um, either way you want to do it, so it's really nice. But this is another RS NOR latch, so it saves the state of the input um, in itself. So anyways, um, continuing on, um, these are really useful for, for example, um, let me think, uh, you want a light to turn on uh, in your base when somebody walks in. So I come into your base, this is just a very not clean look, but what will happen is, for example, you're going to have a light turn on whenever somebody walks in. So this will be our light, okay? Okay, as you can tell, it's off, but whenever somebody walks into your base and hits a pressure plate, for example, it'll turn the light on. And they don't have any way of turning it off, even by stepping off the pressure plate, hitting the pressure plate again, anything like that. Um, they'd have to find the reset button, or you would have to, you know, could do like a combo lock or something to uh, reset the, uh, the circuit back. So that's a very uh, simple example of what it could be used for. Over here is um, a pulse limiter, or whatever you guys want to call it. Pretty much what it does is it takes a signal. So this is going to be on forever, unless you switch it back to off. This is a lever. Um, but what it'll do is it'll shorten it to a very, very small time, and it'll turn back off. So it'll just pretty much like blink. This torch right here um, is actually going to be the output, and I have a piston attached to it to give it a more visual reference of what happens. So what's going to happen when I turn this switch on? The piston's going to extend for a very short period of time and contract. So let's look at it. There we go. Even though the state 
is always on. The piston didn't stay up, it just went up and down very, very short time. So let's look at the torch here. So let's turn it off and turn it back on. As you can tell, that torch just blinked. So it was really nice. Okay, let's go, let's look at that later after we go over clocks, which we're going to head over to this for. Um, this is a very simple clock. Um, I think it's considered a three clock because of the design, uh, because of the delay on here, um, which that means is that uh, it switches, um, it activates every three ticks. So let's go ahead and show you what that means. Um, this is going to be an auditory reference, so go ahead and crank up that volume. Um, as you can tell, this side over here activates um, at when this side is off, and this side is activates when this side is off, um, and that's and it stays at a steady rhythm. Okay, so let's turn that off, and that's considered to be a clock. This is a toggle toggleable clock. Oof, long word. Um, so that uh, you'd be able to control whether it's on or off with a simple input to this side of the circuit. Um, it could be a wire if you want it to be or anything like that so as long as it's on uh, your circuits off so what you could actually do is uh, go ahead and head over to this RS NOR latch over here um, and connect them and make it so when somebody walks into your base they hit the RS NOR latch toggle the state of the input allow this to run and then you actually have an active alarm system you could even put blinking lights on and everything so you could do it like this, have a bunch of blinking lights going on, and sound. I don't know, whatever you guys want to do with it. That's what I usually use it for. Nothing more. Okay, um, this was me experimenting with note blocks. Uh, they actually act sound differently um, on each one of the different these different types of blocks. Gravel, sand, um, wood, um, any types of wood sounds different glass stone cobblestone or whatever um and dirt and i'm pretty sure there's i don't know you look it up on the wiki too they sound different though really deep the normal piano like sticks like cool snare drum it seems like some sort of like bass guitar or something okay um that's that let's go on over here this is totally not my design at all but this is going this is used i would have to say a lot for really really large um scale um piston contraptions um for a timer and uh, this one actually has an on off switch and as you can tell it sends out little pulses uh, you could use these as outputs right here boom boom so it sends off a little pulse and as you can tell it goes around in the circle wherever that gold block is i know it's kind of loud so we'll turn it off um, so that each one of those would power some sort of component with pistons or whatever. Um, and it's all timed perfectly because that's, that's a clock, just like it is over here. Okay, and uh, that's that for that. And uh, as I promised, I'm going to introduce you guys to uh, how to make a lever. No, sorry, how to make a button into a lever. Now, as you know, a button activates redstone. For a short time it's like 0.9 seconds so for like nine clicks or something um, but what we can do is by integrating a t flip flop which this is an example of um, there's one over here as well uh, what you can do is turn any kind of input into a switch input so uh, you know it looks very very you know the, the blocks look very similar to that um, what you do is create any kind of t flip flop uh, this is the piston version I'm just looking at the sun for light. Uh, this is a piston version, but what it will do is I have it set up for an example here. You don't need this long uh, wire around or this lever. But what will happen is I hit this button, and it switches the state of that right there, and the block goes up. Now, this specific model is a, what is it it's called? Um, <laughs> the um, means a, oof. This is a negative or downslope or whatever. <laughs> oh, sorry. Negative edge uh, triggered. 
I think that's what it's consider considered. So what happens is it changes states whenever this wire turns off. So whenever the state of it is is uh, not positive, <laughs> rising edge, oh sorry, leading edge or falling edge triggered, that's what it is. So whenever it's, this, it switches states whenever it turns from on to off, not from off, which the button is right now, to on. It doesn't do anything, it does it whenever it turns off. But as you can tell, uh, whenever I hit it, it activates this wire right here, um, activating this piston. And whenever I hit it again, it deactivates it. So it's like hitting a button is like turning on a switch or off a switch, on a switch or off a switch. So it's pretty nice. Um, this one specific model is done with, um, ooh, I think it's done with the normal pistons. Uh, you also can do it with sticky pistons as well. Uh, I don't know if it increases the speed very much, but you can tell um, this piston, for example, will retract, or this one will re retract faster than the other one extends. Um, when it retracts, it pulls back the block. So I don't know if you have like a, a one tick increase or something. The way you can change this to where it works faster is by adding some sort of input um, to make it, or, or by changing the input from... Uh, just pretty much putting a standard not gate on our, or yeah, not gate on the top or whatever it's called. Um, if you push the button now, it instantly changes the piston state over here, raising our block. So you don't have to wait. It just acts immediately after you push the button. So it's real nice. So it's really, really nice. Okay, so that's how you turn a button into a switch. Um, and I'm going to be integrating these on a lot of my uh, inventions. There's a lot of different ways to make them. I just like this one because it is the most compact and it hasn't been changed even though it was considered to be a bug a long time ago, I'm pretty sure, um, how this piston contraption worked here, this specific T flip-flop. Um, if you guys have any more questions about um, different devices that I'm using, I will add them to a second episode of this or I will make one dedicated just to that type of device in the future. Um, for further reference, go ahead and check out the wiki or the forums under the redstone section, um, especially under the piston um, circuitry section. Uh, it usually reduces the complexity of the circuit by a lot if you use pistons in your um, latches and switches and stuff and flip-flops. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and have a good day.